um, finish this song. I belong with you. You belong with me. Oh, good. You guys know it's sweetheart. Some of you are probably still like, you're my pop tart. Okay, like you're like, wait, I don't know what it says. You're my Walmart. Okay, awesome. Um, how about this one? Baby, I will be. Okay, awesome. Some of you are like, I cry when I hear that song. Okay, um, what about this song? Um, all of me loves all, all your. And I have the part, am I muffin top too? Okay, so <laughs> tell my husband, you gotta love all of me, including the muffin top. All right, so, all right, we are here today, and a lot of you guys are here because when it comes to love, man, we love love. We love hearing about topics of dating. In fact, last year on the survey, this was the number two topic you guys wanted to hear about was dating, okay? Dating, relationships, sex, all that good stuff. And I'm just gonna, look at me right now, look at me. I'm gonna be very honest with you. Okay, I am not gonna sugarcoat things. I'm gonna say things that you might be like, oh, whoa, she just said that. Like, I can't believe a speaker just said that at Steubenville. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you. So I want you to repeat after me, Jackie. Jackie. I promise to still love you, even if you say things that make me mad. Amen. All right, amen. Now, here's the thing. Okay, shh. Quiet down, find your seats, guys. Here's the thing. I, I'm going to tell you the truth. So this, this workshop is about dating. I'm going to go into dating um, and, and sex and all this kind of stuff. But the purpose of dating, the purpose of dating, you guys, is uh, because we have 20 minutes. I literally have 20 minutes. I could talk, about, I could talk for two hours about this topic, and I have before. Um, but I'm going to, in 20 minutes, try to get you, like, the basics of dating. Okay. The purpose of dating is to find your future spouse, okay? That is the purpose of dating. It's not to get with someone. It's not to have somebody by your side because you're lonely. It's not to have status, whatever. The purpose of dating is to find your future spouse. So if at any time you are dating somebody and you realize they are not your future spouse, you should break up with them. Because there's always two options. When you're dating someone, the two options are you're either gonna break up with them or you're gonna marry them. There's pretty no, there's no other option. So when you date someone, you have the intention. Now I'm gonna say something that's gonna make the ladies very, very happy in this moment. Guys, you need to start asking girls on dates. And yeah. <laughs> ladies, this will also make you very happy. Guys, you need to stop asking girls to hang out and you need to start saying, will you go on a date with me? Amen. Okay, I know that was gonna make the ladies happy. <laughs> Cause guys, shh. Now I also have had the question like, can girls ask guys on dates? You can, you can. But in general, uh, what I've seen with the, like guys know, and guys will pursue, like, like ladies, we want a guy to pursue us. Um, and guys are not that dumb, okay? Guys know, they, sometimes guys, you might be a little aloof. Like ladies, you might have to send some hints, like drop a hint here or there. But guys, you're smart, but guys, Listen, ask girls on a date, be intentional. But I'm gonna say this too, and this is gonna make a lot of you happy too. You don't have to date in high school, amen? You don't have to date. Because I know there's a lot of pressure. A lot of you guys feel like you have to date because everybody else has a boyfriend. Everyone else has a girlfriend. Here's the deal. If the purpose of dating is marriage, but you're not planning on even getting married in the near future, then really the, what dating becomes in high school, a lot of people who date in high school, the whole purpose of dating is like, how far can I go with this person? How much of their clothes can I take off of them until we like basically are, are in a state of mortal sin? I mean, that's what a dating becomes. It doesn't become, a lot of times it's not, how can I get you to heaven? And here's the deal, every single relationship you have, the goal should be, it should not be how far can I go with this guy? How far can I go with this girl? The goal should be how can I help get this person to heaven? Why? Here's, look at me, you're gonna hate me for this. Every single guy you date and every single girl you date, except for one, is somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. You're like, crap, I hate you. <laughs> Why'd you have to tell me that? Let me say that again. Ladies, every guy you date, except for the one, is somebody else's husband. Ladies, I'm gonna ask you a question. What do you want your future husband's girlfriend doing with him right now? 
you're like breaking up. I will cut you, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, what do you want your future wife doing with her boyfriend right now? You're like breaking up. I will break his legs. Okay? So my question to you is this. How are you going to treat somebody else's future wife? And how are you going to treat someone else's future husband? Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I dated guys, I knew that the thing I had to protect them most from was myself. I'm not going to lie to you. Y'all, my last name is Angel up here, but I'm just saying, okay? I told the girls earlier, like, my husband, we were dating. My husband is hot, okay? Like, he is good looking. I told the ladies, I was very honest, like, I wanted to pounce him, okay? So I wanted to pounce him. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. I know that chastity within dating is hard. It's very difficult, okay? It is very difficult. It is not easy. And so we have to sometimes protect that person from ourselves. But we have to have a shift in realizing that the purpose of dating is not for me to see the person with less and less clothes. The, person, the purpose of dating is for me to help get this person to heaven and in some cases prepare them to be a future wife or husband to someone else. And in my case, I told the ladies this, four guys I dated went into seminary after they dated me. Yeah, you're welcome. I just gave you priests. Gave them to you. No, just kidding. I had a vocations director one time. He's like, Jackie, you just date guys and they'll run to seminary. I'm like, that's not very nice. Okay. So, um, but... But the, the purpose is, is like, you should be able to, on their wedding day, your, your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend's wedding day, you should be able to look their spouse in the face and say, I respected her body and her heart, her mind, her soul. And ladies, you should be able to say that about the guys you date. Whew, right? That's tough, right? I also had a dad. <laughs> this is funny. If you want to know, I'm going to tell you how far is too far because that's always the asked question that I get. How far is too far? But I'm going to say this one, this one dad, I thought it was so funny and disturbing. Um, he said this. He would, he would tell the boyfriends that would come for his daughters, he would tell them this. He's like, everything you do to my daughter, I'm going to do to you. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> please don't. Okay. So, I'm going to answer the question, so what is acceptable? What is acceptable in dating? What is too far? What is the gray area? I'm going to just say it. Everything, okay, so there's a difference between affection and arousal. Affection is holding hands, a, a, a kiss, um, a hug. Signs of affection are appropriate. Sign, anything that's arousal is preparing you to have sex and is meant for marriage alone. And I know you're like, what? Okay, I told you, you're, some of you are going to hate me. And I actually had a girl come up to me earlier. She's like, Jackie, I watched your video on Ascension Presents about how far is too far. And she's like, I hated it. She's like, because I didn't want to hear it. Because I knew it was true. Everything that is arousal that starts the train is preparing you for sex and everything that is meant for marriage alone, even if you are engaged. Now, I'm gonna just be honest, I am not perfect. I'm not standing up here saying I've done it perfectly. I've gone to confession so many times. And let me tell you, I'm up here saying, man, I wish, I wish I hadn't dated all the guys before my husband. I wish I could say that my husband was my first kiss. My best friend, Marianne, my best friend, when she was 29, that was the first time she had her first kiss and her first boyfriend. And sometimes people are like, what? But guess what? He ended up becoming her husband. I wish I could say that. Yeah. Because truthfully, the only guy who deserves me, the only guy who deserves to see all of me is the man who promised to love all of me at the altar. He is the only guy who deserves to have all of me. No other guy deserves that. The only person who deserves to see all of you, I, had, I think Jason ever said, he's like, the only person who deserves to see your naked body is the person who's promised to love your naked soul too. I was like, shoot, dang, lay it down, you know? That's just the truth. So how far is too far? So signs of affection are appropriate. So what am I saying? Even making out, even making out can cause, again, it's, I don't know, let me tell you. You can, you can be very honest with yourself. I don't know a lot of people who can make out, with it out without getting severely aroused, okay? And, and ladies, you also have to know that we are built differently than guys. I'll tell you a story of a friend of mine. He was sitting with his girlfriend, 
and they were sitting, they were watching a movie, and you know, he puts his arm around her, he's like, oh, this is nice, and she puts her, her hand on his thigh, and she's probably like, oh, that's nice, and him, he's like, rah, rah, rah. you know, this, the train is starting, and all she's done is put her hand on his thigh, okay? We are built differently, and that's okay. And so when you guys are dating, I will say, the, my, some of my very first dates, I, number one, I, I, I'm a big believer in not wasting your time, okay? Your time is precious, amen? So whenever I went on dates with guys, I would always kind of try to find out how Catholic they were. Like the first date, I'm like, what do you believe about the church's teachings on NFP? You know, like I'm like trying to figure this out. And some of them, they were so scared. And, some of, and then on the first date, I'm kind of also fishing like what they believe, because I had a guy ask me like, so how far are you willing to go? And I basically told him like, I'm not gonna have sex with you. I'm not gonna have oral sex with you. I'm not gonna do this and this, this. And he was like, what? And I had another guy I dated. He was like, oh, come on, don't be such a prude. And I'm like, oh, heck no, I will cut you. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, because again, dating is not about how far you can go with somebody else's wife. It's not about how far you can go with someone else's husband. You guys, we have to change our shift because here, Pope John Paul said in the future, this was in 1960s, Pope John Paul said in the future, the opposite of love is not gonna be hate, it's gonna be use. That we use people as objects for our own pleasure instead of loving them as persons. You guys, I have been trained to use people. You have been trained to use people. And our generation, especially with pornography, and I'm not condemning anyone, my, my, I know the average age that porno of pornography exposure is between nine and 11. My husband works at an all boys Catholic high school and most of them say, most of their high school boys say, I was exposed to pornography at the age of eight. Because somebody showed it to me, they shoved it in my face or I just, it was an innocent search gone wrong or whatever it was. My husband was, how old, he was, I think, eight, 11, nine, he was playing hide and seek in his uncle's house and his uncle in this closet had a stash of Playboy magazine and my husband looks at it, he's like, that's not Nickelodeon magazine, you know? And so my husband is one of those statistics and my husband had to root out pornography out of his life and thankfully he did it before, five years before we got married. I'm so thankful because I have girlfriends and, who, who are in their marriage their husbands are looking at porn, and, I, and guys, I'm just going to tell you a little insight right here. Guys, every single girl already hears the voice. This is the devil talking. Every single girl already hears the voice in her head that she's not good enough. She's not beautiful enough. She's not skinny enough. And then could you imagine when her husband starts looking at hundreds of other women? For her, it's basically like, well, clearly not even my husband thinks I'm good enough. He has to go to all these other women to get aroused because I'm not beautiful enough. <sighs> that, the devil is a jerk, man. The devil is a jerk. Now I wanna say, I tell this to the ladies, porn is not just a guy's problem, it's also a girl's problem. And girls and guys, we have been, we have been trained in how to use people for pleasure and how to use people for our emotional pleasure and our physical pleasure. So what I'm doing in this talk, basically I'm gonna have to try to completely flip it and that we aren't dating and we aren't in relationships to use people for our own pleasure. We're in relationships to get people to heaven, amen? amen? I mean, if I could say anything, that's why we are in relationship. The whole purpose of my husband and I being married is to get each other to heaven. The number one purpose of our marriage is not like, people think, I don't, for some reason you all think when, like, when you get married, you're just having sex all the time, no. I mean, no, like when you get married, my husband and I basically said on our wedding day, my goal is to get you to heaven. And that's why somebody asked the question, and I know people ask this question too of, um, can I date someone who is an atheist? Can I date someone who is not Catholic? And my question to you is this, if your purpose is to get to heaven with your spouse and an atheist doesn't even believe in heaven, then no. And I would ask you this, you, we don't just need to think of ourselves, we need to think of our children. So my question to you is, if, you're, if you died, would your spouse be able to help get your children to heaven? Okay, so we need to think that when we're dating somebody, we're thinking, is this person the person that's gonna help get me to heaven and are they gonna help get my children to heaven too? And I know you guys, I was not raised like this. I didn't learn until I was in my 20s what really chastity was. Chastity just means an integration of body and soul. Chastity is not just not having sex. Chastity is looking at every one of you and seeing you as my brother or sister in Christ. That's what chastity is. 
Every single one of you guys in this room, you are my brother in Christ. And my goal is to help get you to heaven. It's not to use you for my own gain, my own pleasure, my own emotional, whatever. Every lady in this room, you are my sister in Christ. And my goal is to get you to heaven. You are my family. By our baptism, we are family. And my goal should be to love you to heaven. So when the question of how far is too far, I understand, I ask the same question, but it's the wrong question. It's how can I help get this person to heaven? That should be the question, but how far is too far? I've told you, it, signs of affection are good, or signs of arousal are meant for marriage, okay? And even in marriage, I wanna say this, even in marriage, not everything is allowed. I didn't know this till I was in my 20s. Because I kind of thought when you got married, everything's allowed. You could use, you know, I thought, I was like, you can use contraception. You can do whatever you want in marriage. Uh-uh. Can I be very honest with you? Are you guys ready? You're like, I've never heard a speaker say this in my life. Are you ready for this? If you're too young, earmuffs, okay? Put your earmuffs, ready? Everything, if you're too young, maybe you're not ready, put your earmuffs on. Okay, here's the deal. I'm just going to be honest. You're like, I've never heard somebody say this, and especially from a student middle stage. Okay. Okay, so, I'm just gonna say it. Every single act in marriage has to end in consummation. Because sex is not just a bodily reality, it's actually a spiritual reality where a husband and wife become one body, one flesh, one spirit, and they are actually mirroring the love of the Trinity. Every, sex, the purpose of sex is procreation and the bonding of a spouse. Not just theologically, but spiritually. And, and, and every single act, is open to life, it's procreative, and it bonds the spouses because it's not just biological, it's theological, it's a spiritual reality, you become one flesh. So what does that mean? I'm just gonna be very scientific about it. Okay, ready? <laughs> Earmuffs if you need it. A man's semen, a husband's semen needs to end up in his wife's vagina. There, I said it. Okay, all right, go, all right. <laughs> Woo, all right. So, I'm just gonna be very frank with you. You're like, I never have heard that before. Oral sex within marriage is not okay. If oral stimulation in marriage is okay if it leads to the consummation of sex. Anal sex within marriage, anal sex at all. If, if semen ends up anywhere, again, this is not just a case of plumbing, and I know people think this, but you guys, it's because sex has a purpose. What is the purpose of sex? Well, guess what? On my wedding day, my husband and I took vows. We, took, we made promises. And these four promises, the church asks you, they said, do you promise to love freely, totally, faithfully, fruitfully? Why? Because love is only real love if it mirrors what happened on the cross. This love right here was free, total, faithful, fruitful. So on your wedding day, if you get married in a Catholic church, they will ask you, do you come here freely? And we say, yes, we are not, this is not an arranged marriage. We are not forced to be here. We are free from any addiction. Because if you are addicted to something, you are not free to say yes to something else. You are a slave to sin. And so we said, yes, we are free. They said, oh, do you come here totally? Do you give everything or are you going to hold something back? We said, no, we, get, we come totally. And the day before my wedding, and the day before my wedding, both my husband and I went to confession. And I confessed. I said, Father, I, I, forgive me for anything I have ever done with any other guy who was not my husband. Forgive me for everything I have done because when I marry Bobby, I want to give everything to him, 100%. I don't want to give, you know, I don't want to give him 70%. And I know I had given parts of myself away to other guys. I was a virgin when I got married, but still, I had given parts of myself away to other guys. And I, want, I wanted to ask for forgiveness for not respecting the bodies of these other men, their hearts, their souls, their minds. So my husband and I were like, I give you all my, totally. Fruitfully, are you open to children? Yes. And faithful, are you gonna be faithful to this one person till death do you part? Yes. And guess what? Those wedding vows, those promises that we made, we made them with our words on our wedding day, but guess what? When, when we consummated our marriage, the Latin word for it is sex, um, when we had sex, we actually, those vows became flesh. So every time a couple has sex, they're renewing their wedding vows. Pope John Paul, somebody's like, well, what about people having sex outside of marriage? And he said, well, they're lying with their body because they're making a promise with their bodies that they never made with their words. Whew. I'm not up here to condemn. That's what the devil does. I'm up here and the Holy Spirit will hopefully convict. What I'm saying to you 
is that you guys were made for more. The world tells you, the world tells us that we're just animals. How do I know this? The, our government tells us that we're animals. Oh, don't even get me started, but I will tell you one instance, okay? How do I know the government thinks that you're just animals with no self-control? They don't think that you're, you're capable of self-control. How do I know the government thinks that? Because when you go on the government's website, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, it used to say, it used to say that one out of every four college students, or sorry, one out of every four college, sexually active college students will at some point get HPV. You know what it says on their website now? Virtually every single sexually active person will at some time, at some point get HPV. You know what the number one, and then they're like, how do you not get HPV? You would think the number one thing they would say to not get HPV would be what? Don't have sex. You would think that's what they would tell you. The 100% you know, way of not getting HPV is not having sex, but it doesn't say that. Number one is wear a condom. Number two is get a vaccine. Because they don't think that it's possible for you to have self-control. When I was in my 20s, I was asked, I mean, I was made fun of for not having sex before marriage. People were shocked. It was like I was a unicorn or something. Like, what? You exist? I didn't know that. You know, like, it's crazy. If you decide to wait for marriage, to have sex, and even if you've made mistakes in the past, but you decide from this day that you're like, you know what? I want to learn how to love properly. I want to learn how to love like Jesus. I want to learn, I want to know that, I want, I want to live my life that I know that sex is a gift and it's, it's, it's for procreating for the bonding of spouses and it's to be open to life. It's a life-giving love. It's not just for my pleasure. And so when it comes to dating, when it comes to boundaries, this is what I'm going to say to you. If you are dating somebody, number one, this is what a lot of you guys in this room probably may have boyfriends or girlfriends. That's what you're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you this. You want to know if your boyfriend or girlfriend really loves you? Tell them you're going to stop having sex with them or doing anything sexually physical with them and see what they say. Because you'll know real quick why they're in a relationship with you. In, in, in two weeks, you'll probably know. Maybe in a month, you'll know if they are only in a relationship with you because they're using you or if they're in a relationship because they actually love you. And I will say, if anybody ever just tolerates the fact that you want to live a life of chastity, you need to cut them. Okay? Because if they're like, I've told guys this too, like, I'm not going to have sex till marriage. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I would, but, you know, I'll basically, like, tolerate you. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I deserve, I want a husband who's running the race with me. I don't want a husband, a guy who's going to be a pusher. And guys, my brothers in Christ, look at me right now. Brothers in Christ, my, my brothers, the guys in this room, I want to apologize to you from every woman. Because I know a lot of times guys are seen as the predator. But guys, I want to apologize to you of every single woman who has manipulated you. Can I get an amen? Okay. Because the truth is, you're not, uh, again, we, we sometimes see that all guys are always depressed, but I know so many of my guy friends who wanted to wait till marriage to have sex, but they had a girlfriend who was the pusher. Oh man. I mean, impossible. I've had so many good Catholic guy friends who were like, I lost my virginity because I was, I was really, I wanted to wait, but the girlfriend was the one who was the pusher. You guys, chastity is difficult enough when you're on the same page. So I highly recommend if you're dating someone, you need to discuss this and have a conversation and it needs to be constant because Bobby and I, when we were dating, we were constantly talking about it. Like, how do we, you know, what do we do? We're not going to lay down next to each other because we know that's, I mean, we're just way tempted. If we're laying down next to each other, we're going to have to keep our feet on the floor, feet on the floor. Okay, and then past 1130, I'm going to pounce you. I'm turning into a cougar. You know what I'm saying? Like, past this time, you guys have to be smart. You guys, we got to know ourselves. And I know myself, and I hope you learn to know yourself too, to have boundaries. And so when you're dating somebody, it's good to talk about this. The other red flag is this. If you can't talk to your boyfriend or girlfriend about this, that's a huge red flag. If you're walking on eggshells about this with your boyfriend or girlfriend, that is not the person you should marry. Because the person you marry is your best friend. The person you marry, you should be able to talk about anything. The person you marry should be the person that you talk about anything and you love them so much, but sometimes you want to punch them in the face, but you're like, I still love you and I'm really mad at you. But you should be able to talk about everything with your spouse. Everything. If there is something you cannot talk to with your boyfriend or girlfriend, that's a red flag. 
You should not have fear in a relationship. You should not be afraid that someone is going to break up with you if you bring a, a topic up. Amen? I mean, I've had boyfriends like that. I told the ladies, I'm going to tell the guys this. How do you know that somebody is the one? How do you know someone is the one? It's because for the first time in a relationship, you actually feel free. You feel like you completely can be yourself. Just like you could be with your best guy friends or your best girlfriends, the person you marry should be someone that you completely can be free to be who God created you to be. You shouldn't be afraid that you're too Catholic. You shouldn't be afraid that you're too goofy. You shouldn't be afraid that you're too smart or too whatever. The person you marry should be your best friend. And we talked about this in the women's session, I hope in the guys too, about a virtuous friendship is getting someone to heaven. And that's the purpose. So I'm gonna invite up um, uh, my, my good friend, Matt, come on up. We're gonna, we're gonna feel some question and answers right now. Do a question and answer portion. And you guys got to ask some questions. Oh, shoot, should I say this? Okay, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Look at, you're like, dang, this girl, she is saying things. Okay, I'm gonna say this because they're, <laughs> okay, you got, she's like, you got this. All right, all right. Hey guys, I'm gonna just tell you the differences between men and women, okay? There's no other word. I, you guys, if there's another synonym for this, but please tell me, but there just isn't. Guys, you are always horny, okay? Can I get an amen? It's okay, be proud of it. All right, let me, <laughs> there's no other word. There's no other word. Is there a word? There's like sexually excited. Okay, I don't know. I'm gonna go down for a minute. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. Okay, if there's another word you can think of that's just as, no, okay, so guys, you were always horny. Ladies, I'm, guys, I'm gonna give you an insight into women. Ladies, how we are built, we are complicated, okay? We are the last to be created in all of creation, and in the story of creation, everything gets more and more beautiful, more complex. Ladies, you are the most complex creature in all of creation, amen? So, I'm gonna give you an insight right now into ladies. Ladies, when you chart your cycle, which every single one of you should do as a teenager, okay? I'm gonna te teach my daughters to chart their cycles. Ladies, the first seven days of your cycle when you have your period, okay, there's that. On the eighth day of your cycle, out of like an average 28 day cycle, okay, let's just as an average. On the eighth day of your cycle, your estrogen starts rising. From day eight to day 13, it starts rising. And day 13 to 15, in average, is when you are fertile. This is when women are most horny. Because this is when your body is saying, I wanna have a baby. I had a friend that when she was dating, she was like, I, when I charted my cycle, I made sure on those couple days that I, we created group dates or else I was going to pounce, okay? Those are the times that she realized she had to have better boundaries for herself because with her boyfriend and her, I think it was her fiance, she was like, I had to know myself that these are the days I'm like, let's make a baby, but we're not ready to make a baby because we're not married. Okay, so ladies, then what happens is that day... 13 to 15, you are fertile. That's how your body, and then your estrogen starts dropping. And what's crazy is that as the estrogen starts rising, your, your cheeks are pinker, your eyes get bigger, your lips get fuller, and actually your voice becomes more attractive. They did a study that even men and women thought a woman's voice was most attractive when she was ovulating, when she was fertile. And they did a study that said men's skin, when they heard a fertile woman, the electric, like they, it was like electric going through their skin when they heard a fertile woman's voice. Shoot, dang! Okay. Well, guess what? They actually did a study that showed that women who were fertile were seen more beautiful than supermodels. Now, guess what? When you're doctors, when you're a teenager and you have heavy periods and cramps and stuff like that, doctors immediately put you on the pill and they stop you from having a cycle. What the pill does is a pill puts you in a state of pregnancy. It makes your body think you are pregnant. Ladies, I will talk to you. I just did a video called Why to Get Off the Birth Control Pill. But if you are a teenager and your doctor has prescribed the pill, thank God the Catholic Church there has something called NAPRO technology. It's natural procreative technology where every single reason you are told to be put on the pill, they have a better, healthier option for you. Amen? Okay. So... Guys, we know your body. You know your body. Ladies, now you know your body. I just wanted to get that in there because I think it's so fascinating that ladies, when you are fertile, like you literally are giving off pheromones that are attracting men who are bio-identical, like they are not bio-identical to you, meaning that's good for mating. I mean, it's just, our bodies are amazing, you guys. So, question and answer. Sorry. Okay, I just had to say that. I got to say too that 
I know that about my wife. I know where she is in her cycle, not because I'm always specifically aware, like watching the chart, but I can tell just being around my wife. Oh my gosh, yes. And that's a beautiful thing in marriage. It's a beautiful thing in marriage. And she just told me, she said, hey, tell Jackie that 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 series on getting off the pill is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Jackie, Angel, get off the pill. Okay, so you guys asked some questions. I tried to answer some of them. Was that one of them? The Sorry, was I too honest with you guys or do you like like honesty? I'm sorry, I've just, I might not be asked back. Okay, you're like, she said the word horny and she said the word semen. Okay, sorry, all right. I'm your big sister and I will be completely honest with you. It's just, I hope this is not being recorded. Okay, so. All right, um, 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 um. somebody asked what counts as losing your virginity? And I don't know if this is a question of some of you in this room have been violated. And I've worked with a lot of girls who've been sexually abused and they, they think they've lost their virginity. I'm just like heartbroken. Listen, the gift of virginity, this is a gift that you give. So if somebody has violated you, you guys, yeah, no, you have not lost your, if someone has taken it, no, they have, you have not given it freely, okay? And I wanna say from this day forward, if you feel convicted today, first of all, I forgot to say, If you have ever done something with somebody else's spouse that is for marriage alone, please run to confession. Pope Francis said that God never tires of forgiving us, but we get tired of asking for forgiveness. You guys, I had to go to confession a lot about this stuff. Run to confession after this and know that God is so merciful that today is the day that you can start anew, amen? Okay, okay, so we got quite a few questions about being gay. And a, a, a few people said, I am gay or I'm in a relationship. Um, and are, are people who have same sex attraction, are they doomed to a life of misery? I know what I'm going to say, but I want you to talk to Matt. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's easy for us to put things in, in buckets or categorize people. And if you think about it, it's, it's the same, it's the same universal challenge call to holiness and chastity for all of us. If we are unmarried, we're still called to chastity. And even within a marriage, I'm called to chastity. Like the only person that I'm allowed to be in an intimate relationship like that with is my spouse. And that's the same message for all of us. And I know, man, there are real crosses in this room of, of people dealing with um, you know, specific struggles or identities or, or uh, same-sex attraction. I know there are real struggles. And I want you to know the church has a place for you and that your place is here and you're part of God's family regardless of, of, the, of the attractions or of your struggles. Um, it's the same call though, right? It's that same call to holiness, that same call to chastity. Uh, I will say this because I've gotten the question like if, okay, because obviously the church believes that sex is for a purpose. And if you think, or what are the most intimate ways that a woman and a woman can be? What are the most intimate ways that a man and a man can be? In the church's eyes, anal sex and oral sex and, you know, again, mutual masturbation, that's not acceptable. And you guys, I'm not saying... because there is a purpose, there's a biological and spiritual purpose. And so I hear my, my lovely, like my sisters and brothers in Christ come to me and say, well, then are you telling me I can't be happy? Number one, happiness doesn't equal sex. Our culture idolizes and worships sex as if it's the, f- the fullness of happiness. Number two, I've also had the question, well, I can't be in a romantic relationship. Romantic relationships are also not the fullness of happiness. You guys, Father Leo and all the priests on this stage are not having sex. Do, does Father Leo, who is like so amazing, does he look sad? No. And some people, I've heard this comment like, oh, well, Father Leo was called to celibacy. Well, guess what? Maybe God, God has put a call on your life. If, you, if you've been given this cross of same-sex attraction, God is not calling us to be, you know, he's not saying that you, God is calling every single one of us to holiness. And so we, I kind of, we got the question like, you say this whole thing is about belonging, but do I only belong if? So I want to make a distinction. Guess what? God loves every single one of you, no matter what. 
God doesn't love you if you are good or if you do this or if you go to mass every week. Guess what? God loves every single person. God loves every single person who is gay, who is transgender because they are made in the image and likeness of God. God loves every Muslim person, every Buddhist person. And guess what? God is calling every single one of us to holiness. Is this easy? No. Guess what? Every single person has a cross in their life. Maybe it's same-sex attraction. For Matt, when I heard his story of his daughter dying at two years old, I, I wept. when I saw that picture, I just started weeping because I have three kids under four. I can't imagine. Look at how joyful this man is, a man of joy. You guys, we think that these certain crosses, and maybe it's a cross of infertility. Maybe it's a cross of having a miscarriage. You know, I don't know what your cro the cross is going to be, but God is calling everyone to holiness. And I'm going to say it right now. If you in this room have, are experiencing same-sex attraction, that God loves you and God, we, you guys, we need more witnesses in the church of people who are joyful and living a life of chastity with same-sex attraction. Can I get an Amen. And if you want to know if it's possible, there's a young girl. She's, her name's Avera Maria Santo. I follow her on Twitter. I've gotten to communicate with her. She's absolutely lovely. She's African-American young girl. She talks about having same-sex attraction. And she's like, listen, she is so full of joy, the smile on her face. And she's like, people tell me I can't be happy because I'm not having sex. She's like, but it's absolutely possible. And again, we equate intimacy with sex. Well, guess what? Some of the deepest intimacy you will ever have is with your friends. You guys, and I'm going to say this to you, if one of your friends comes out as being gay or they come out as being a lesbian, I don't want you to run away from them, but I want you to show them that, it's, that you love them and that it's possible to have a deep friendship with them. Amen? Don't be scared. We need to learn intimacy and that intimacy does not equal sex. But it's possible to have a deep friendship with someone. You guys, friendship is more, oh my gosh, like there's going to be a day when my husband and I don't have sex anymore. And there are times in our marriage that we abstain. But my husband and I have a deep friendship and I love my husband so much. If my husband got in an accident when we were married, right when we were married and we weren't able to have sex ever, I'd be like, okay, I love him. He is my best friend. And so I know this is a cross. I want you to I, make no mistake. God loves you and you do belong here. And God is calling every single one of us to holiness no matter what our cross is. And if you want to talk to me more about this, I would love to talk to you or one of us, you know, we would love to, but you are my brother and my sister in Christ, no matter what you're going through and that God loves you. Amen. I don't know what amen. else to say. I believe every person when they struggle needs someone to walk with them. Yes. Amen. And if you are struggling with same sex attraction, if you are struggling with any sort of relationship issue, past wounding, whatever the, whatever the wound or struggles you have, you need someone to walk with you. And that means you've got to reach out and have somebody walk with you who can speak truth into your life, that can mentor you and, and isn't going to judge you and cast you aside. We're going to bring you close, show you Jesus, and be Jesus to you. All right, next question is... Oh my gosh, there's so many good questions, you guys. Can I get married Catholic and choose not to have kids? I heard that I can't. Is that true? But I kind of already answered. Jackie did in the free, total, faithful, fruitful part. Before you even exchange vows. You know, most of us know the I take you part of the wedding vows. Those four early promises, it's kind of like, okay, we're going to get these out of the way first to make sure you're here for the right reasons. So have you come here freely, totally, faithfully, fruitfully? And one of those promises you make is it says, will you accept children lovingly as a gift from God? So if you stand at marriage and say, I do, after they've asked you the question, are you going to take children... Uh, accept children lovingly. It doesn't mean now that like you got to go home and like get started right away or have a certain number and then you fit in or whatever, but you have to be open to life for marriage. That's one of the reasons that we, main reasons we get married. And that's why contraception, and you guys, I'm telling you, part of my conversion happened when I was 18. I did not know the church is teaching on contraception and my life changed because I learned at 18 that the church, th again, contraception violates most of those promises because you're not saying, I want all of you. You're like, I want a part of you, but not your fertility. And it's saying, and I don't want to be open to life. And, and so if this is hard to hear, if this is making you uncomfortable, good. Because it's when we're uncomfortable, that's when God works in us. It was in my uncomfortableness that that's when I had a conversion. So if you are uncomfortable at all right now, it's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable because this means God's working in us. And if you are like, I hate this girl. Okay, great. Awesome. I'm doing my job. Okay. Awesome. All right. So kids, I'm trying to think that, man, there's so many others. Um, I'm going to ask this. It, it says, how do you rewire your brain and change the way you look at others with lust after an addiction to masturbation and pornography? 
one choice, one day at a time. Amen. And that might mean some other times in the confessional, like I thought I had this beat. One choice, one day at a time, one action, take the next right step. I have a friend of mine and we Marco Polo back and forth, um, uh, encouraging each other in our lives. We're both dads. He's got 11 kids. Shoot that. I'm falling behind. I only got four in the house. <laughs> oh my God. But we say to each other, when we sign off a of Marco Polo, I said, go do the next right thing. Just the next right thing. It's too easy to think I'm so far away from where I want to be. But the only way you get there is the next right thing. Make the next right step. Yeah. Baby steps. And you absolutely need accountability. There's a, you guys, there's so many websites now for people who struggle with pornography. There's covenanteyes.com that has software. My husband still subscribes to it after still being pornography free for like, gosh, how many years now? Like 11 years. He still subscribes to it because it sends an email to his priest friend and basically keeps him accountable. You guys need accountability. We need accountability to do this. To do this, Whether it's pornography or whether it's just dating somebody, like we need people to help keep us accountable. Um, but it is possible for your brain to rewire. So for instance, they, there was a study that men who looked at pornography, they, they were experiencing erectile dysfunction because a real woman wasn't arousing them anymore. And after these guys got off pornography, it took a couple months but they were able to, they said, regain their mojo. Okay, so, um, but the thing is, your brain, your brain can rewire, okay? So, you guys, if we've struggled, like, I, there's someone that said, the devil knows your name and calls you by your sin, but God knows your sin and calls you by your name. Do not let shame, I know some of us are feeling a deep sense of shame. That is not of God. Okay, God wants us to be free. And that's why if you need to run to confession after this, go run. You guys, be free. Be so free. Do not live a life of shame. All right, and then we only have time probably for one or two more questions. Is chivalry dead? No. Guys, is chivalry dead? No. I will tell you, um, this is kind of on that subject, but my wife and I just recently changed the way we're looking at how to train our children into dating because we watched a, a documentary you might've heard of, it's called The Dating Project. If not, and you're allowed to like, you know, watch this or ask your parents or go watch it, whatever, it's called The Dating Project. It's not offensive in any way. It's a, it's a class in college taught by a professor because when teens are showing up to college, they haven't been trained in dating and they've been trained in the hookup culture. And yeah. college life only reinforces hookup culture. So this class was on how to date. And one of those things they talked about was chivalry, like steps in this, like guys, maybe you don't know how to ask a girl out on a date or what I do on a date. She's like going through practically how long, how much you should spend, where the boundaries are on these dates. So if you need some help, the dating project's a nice resource out there, but chivalry is not dead. Yeah. So I've, I've screened that like four times and love it every time. It's so good. Okay. Um, how do you deal with people who make fun of your choice of keeping your virginity until marriage? Do you want me charitable to answer? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I want to hear the non-charitable answer. Don't be friends with him. Yeah, I'm going to punch him in the face. Have Father Leo come and give him a Holy Spirit punch. All right. Love him, but don't be friends with him. You guys, guess what? I'm just going to say this. You're going to be made fun of. Yeah. If you choose to be Catholic, you will be made fun of. Are you, are you ready to accept that? Yeah. You're going to be persecuted, okay? Here's the, here, it has to come to a point in your life where you are willing to be persecuted for your faith. Being a virgin, I could take that. I'm like, who cares? I don't care about you making fun of me, but people are like, Jackie, you're a bigot, you're a hater, you're this. I'm like, I don't hate anybody. I love every single person, even if I disagree with them. You guys are gonna, there's gonna be a day, you're gonna have to be ready. Are you willing to, to get fired from your job for being Catholic? Are you willing to lose health insurance because you're Catholic? I mean, you guys have to answer these questions in your life. Are you willing to be, to be murdered for being Catholic? Being made fun, I mean, you guys have to say, you're gonna have to answer that at some point. There's our model. If you wanna know what it looks like to follow Christ, this is it. It's gonna cost us. Easy Christianity is not real Christianity. Amen. It's gonna cost something, amen? Amen. It's called the cost of discipleship. Amen. All right. We don't have a lot of time, but I will say to you, every single week, my husband and I come out with videos on Ascension Presents. Father Mike Schmitz has them too. And um, yeah, some of you guys watch them. 
My, my husband and I have answered these questions a lot of them, like how far is too far? How can you be chased in relationships? So you could just, you, on YouTube, just type that in, Jackie and Bobby. And we also have stuff on our blog if, for more questions. And then I will say this, if you want us to answer a question on YouTube, direct message me on Instagram. And I look at my Instagram when I'm like, what four videos should we record this month? And I look at your questions and say, okay, this is what they want me to answer. So go on my, my Instagram is just at Jackie Francois. Francois looks like Franco is. And um, you can just direct message me and say, hey, could you do a video about this? And I'll say, sure, we'll do a video about that. Hey, I love you. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want you to be holy and to be fully alive. Amen. Amen. Go to dinner, run to confession. I love you. Amen.